be done now. This is minute 29. Come here. Let me see. He's dead. What? Oh, who had the gun? I did. Then you shot him. I didn't. Well, you had the gun. If you didn't shoot him, who did? Nobody. Look, there's no gunshot wound. Somebody tried to grab the gun from me in the dark, and the gun went off. Look. The bullet broke that vase on the mantel. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Sorry, He's absolutely right. Look, there's a bullet hole here in the wall. See that? Huh? How did he die? I don't know. I'm not a forensic expert. Well, one of us must have killed him. Well, I didn't do it. Oh, sorry, I need a drink. Maybe he was poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Clue the Movie Podcast, where we break down the 1985 cult classic film Clue, one minute at a time. My name is Brad Gilmore. I'm joined by Jeff. Smith, Jeff, how are we? How are things? How is life? Life is all good. It, it seems like it feels like I haven't seen you in a week, Brad. This is amazing. It feels like just a week. And aren't you a sight just for sore eyes? Oh my goodness. Thank you. You are a sight for sore eyes. Back to the future reference. Already two minutes into the show. Um yes. two seconds. Right. Seinfeld should be right around the corner, too. So stay tuned, everybody. Yeah, I'm aware of you. That's what George says to Kramer in the very first episode of Seinfeld. That's, yes, he does. Keep me in mind. Keep me in mind. I'm aware of you. Uh, welcome back, you. guys. I know Look, that it's done. <laughs> I know that you right. missed us and missed our random ramblings for this uh, podcast that yes. we do. Before we go on with Minute 29, which there was a lot there that I'm excited to talk about, of course, we're picking up where Mr. Body was just killed. In quotations, <laughs> and it ends. I'm sure. Yeah, you know what? I think he's dead. I think he's dead for sure. And it ends with uh, Mr. Green trying to corral Mrs. Peacock. Um, but before yeah. we get there, I want to give a big shout out to John Hatch for joining us on the show. He's got a book coming out here in a couple of months. That of course you should have pre-ordered. Uh, have it in your cart. I did it. Jeff, did you do it? Well, I haven't done it yet, but the only reason is why is because it comes out in uh, November, and I'm not sure where I'm going to be living in November. Oh, right, right. So I don't want it sent to the new tenants here in East Boston if I'm not here. So I might just send it to my parents' house and have them send it to me because I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon, God willing. So, But uh, I definitely am looking forward to uh, what do you mean murder? Which is the name uh, of the book. Uh, that's the short version of the title. And yes. then it's the the making of a cult classic called Clue. That is a cult classic. He's I a big alliteration fan, as am I. I'm very pro alliteration. Oh, me too. Love yeah, alliteration. Alliteration is awesome. Alliteration is my favorite. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, there's several things we're going to have to dress up top because it has been a second since Jeff and I actually – recorded so there's a few things to catch up yeah, on turn the take the, the peel the curtain back, back. It's the been fourth a while, wall actually. is broken down yes um, yes it wasn't last week i was kidding everybody it was a month ago it was a month ago since we last taped yeah on the book thing i want to ask because yeah. what i was going to say is even if you don't live where you're currently living and you still pre-order it what a nice treat <sighs> for somebody who That's might be true. inhabiting your space. And this is what I was going to ask. It Does this make me, I don't know if vain is the right word. I don't know what the right word would be. Is, is it a little? Yes, the, the answer is probably yes. I know you if you have, have to ask. ask. But what I would do is, uh, we were talking before I taped about, I would travel, I travel quite a bit. And a lot of the times your for favorite. a good stretch, I was in Airbnb, I was staying in Airbnbs a lot, right? Because it was kind of a more economical option being on the road. Yeah. And what I would do is I would take, you know, a little thing of books with me of back back from the future, the book I wrote, and um, 
I'd always have them in my bag and I would just sign one and I would leave it at the Airbnb, especially if they had a bookshelf or a little place where they put books. I would just leave it there. And yeah. I thought, well, this is this is fun. Is it fun or is that vain of me to do? What do you think? I think it's both uh, <laughs> because it's it's very, very presumptuous of you uh, to think that they're going to be thrilled by that. But uh, hey, if it makes you feel better. No, I think <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, of course. Uh, no, I think that's that's cool. Uh, I I think back to years and years ago, I shot a horror movie in Long Beach, California, in this house that was for sale. And somebody bought the house right after we were done filming there. And I often thought well, how interesting it would be to leave a DVD of the horror movie that was shot in their home on their front door. So go, what's this? And put it on and see their living room and their dining room and people being cut up and blood shooting everywhere. And and, uh, what would they think of that? Uh, You made the right choice on that one. Yeah, that's a little, that's not as fun as a Back to the Future uh, behind the scenes book. That would probably Uh, make me consider moving, to be honest with you, because horror horror films scare me. This particular neighborhood in Long Beach, we were the least scary part of what was <laughs> happening in that town. We, you know, we had people screaming at two in the morning while we were filming, and it did not stand out at all. <laughs> we were we fit right in. Well, you know what, Long Beach, California, about that movie. Long Beach, California, LBC, the, the, baby. the home LBC, the home of Snoop Dogg, S N W O P D O W G. You know, um, who I got to spend some time with out in WrestleMania. There's a little name drop for you. Yeah, I saw you. Yeah, you had some pictures with Snoop. I had some pictures with Snoop. The other thing I wanted to bring up, we have two other things before we jump into the minute. The other thing I wanted to bring up was speaking of Amazons, I saw a little documentary might have been number (laughs) one on Amazon. special interest. In special interest, beating out Hitman Hart wrestling with shadows. I know. Which is a great doc, by the way. And yes, you, and I love the Heart Foundation. You have so to. I, I don't. I don't feel good about it. Uh, I don't know how it happened because there's only one review on Amazon of ours, and I think they had more. We have one review. It's a five star review. So thank you to whoever that is. But I don't know, and I don't even know what is a special interest Blu-ray. But apparently, I made one, and at, for the moment, it is. Yeah, it's it's well. By the time this comes out, it's probably long gone. But as of now, yes, it was number one on Amazon special interest, which is a very, uh, you know, that's a very specific category. Well, I I don't Obviously. know if I, I don't know if I've talked to you about this or with somebody else, but in all the video stores, whether it be Blockbuster or Hollywood Video, when I would go to rent a video back when you used to do that when I was a kid, especially in the summertime, yeah. all the wrestling videos were always in special interest. And it was oh, always like WrestleMania, the big clamshells of all the WrestleManias. All of them. I think it'd be that. I think it'd be exercise. And then it'd be like anime. golf. Uh, yeah, maybe. There was some anime yeah. in there. And I always so, was like, okay, that's true. So now I really feel bad about not uh, Bret Hart not being number one. I'm sure he will be soon. No. This is good advertising Look. for it too. What's the, what's the Bret Hart uh, documentary called? Wrestling you know? with Shadows. Wrestling with Shadows. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a great one. That's probably very good. It's a great one. I haven't it seen it. Came out in the nineties. It's a nine. It's an old one. Oh, okay. so don't feel too bad. He had its run. It had a okay. great run. Yeah, it's yeah. They had time to be number one. I just got here. Let they, me have my moment. There is a scene in the Bret Hart documentary, and, and wrestling fans will know what I'm talking about. There's the strangest sight ever. Bret Hart in his house in Calgary had a giant, like zombie like a uh, uh, animatronic zombie that was sitting in an electric chair and getting electrocuted in his house. <laughs> okay. And there's like a, there's like a scene of him sitting there on the steps as this thing's like freaking out and going off. And he's, it's very weird. Right. Like, don't look back there. Nothing, nothing to see. It's like the naked gun. Yeah. Please yeah. Please disperse. Don't pay attention to the audio animatronic being executed into the background. So congratulations to you, though. By the way, thank you. Yeah, it's cool. I don't, I don't mean to, you know, be flippant about it. It was very. I never, I no one ever tells me. I kind of just stumble upon things. Like I didn't know when the Blu-ray was coming out till the day, or was for pre-sale till the day it was. Uh, it's not wise to search too much, though, because that's if you dig too deep. 
I get a lot of, well, not a lot, but I get several nice emails from people on social media that are very kind about how much they like the documentary. That's great. If you search too far, you will find the people that don't like it. And they, uh, they're they very creative with their reviews too. So I stumbled upon a, a pretty interesting page where uh, they weren't huge fans. And, and unfortunately, since I'm in the documentary so much, I get singled out uh, every now and then. And I stopped after like reading four. I went, okay, but that just that just means you've made it, man. If you're if people are talking smack about you online, that's a big deal. Did you ever find any reviews of Back from the Future that were uh, not so a ton? Flattering? Not a ton, okay. not a ton. Let me not say yeah. that, but but several that I was like, oh wow, okay, yeah. I mean, sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. I will say I will say a couple of things about criticism. One, when you get it. You definitely, if it's more, like one review on Amazon, it still makes me laugh. It says wasted paper, which is like, okay, that's just <laughs> completely subjective. It doesn't, okay, that doesn't matter. That'd be a good day for a book too. Right. Like an autobiography. It would be really funny to do wasted paper and just, yeah. yeah Brad that'd be Gilmore, wasted, wasted paper. paper. But there are some that you'll read and you'll say, okay, you know what? Good, good point. Like I, I can take that. Sure. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, one guy left me a negative review I, and I actually reached out to him and said, Hey man, I'm doing a paperback version of the book. You want to point out a couple of things. I'm serious. You want to point out a couple of things yeah. that you think I should beef up. And if you want to help me yeah. out, let's do it. And so we actually called, shout out to Aaron. We collaborated on it and okay. he's kind of become actually an editor, a friend of mine who I now reach out to okay. and say, Hey, can you read through this and see what you think? So there are good that come from it. But I remember hearing an interview on a radio station one time where they were talking about criticism and the guy said, look, you're never as good as they say you are, and you're never as bad as they say you are. And yeah. that's where my barometer is a lot of the time. Like, if people say it's the most incredible thing they've ever seen, I'm like, great. If you say it's the it's worst not, thing you've ever yeah. read, sure. It's not either yeah. one of those. So that's I know true. I live in the middle somewhere. So I try not to let them affect me <laughs> one way or another. Yeah. yeah, that's healthy. That's good. Last thing to discuss before we get into the minute. I know, guys, you're okay. thinking, what are we doing? What's going on? Yeah. What's the deal with all the chatter chatter? What? When are they going to stop talking about Bible bands? <laughs> what is the deal? No, well, that's the one thing I was going to bring up is we're getting great social media feedback from all of our, uh, I don't know, what do we call the people who listen to this oh, show? Oh, somebody did suggest uh, something to me. It was... What are that was based on what Doctor Who fans are called? They're called Who Whovians? No, is it Whovians? Yeah, oh, something like that. Like Cluvians? Is and that then they is? said it should be Cluvians. Oh, I like that. But Cluvian sounds like a medication to me. Like, ask your like doctor a... about Cluvian. Oh yeah, but it also sounds like a Star Trek race of alien. Oh, watch out for the Cluvians. Those Cluvians. Those Cluvians are creeps. <laughs> You thought the Klingons were it's bad? It's not bad. It's not bad, but uh, I don't know if we found it yet. But you did throw that out into the Cluniverse. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just made that up so good. Uh, you did throw that out that uh, people should come up with names that I would I would suggest keep going because Kluvian's fine. There may be others. If there are others, tweet them to us at Brad Gilmore. And at, is it Jeff C. Smith? Jeff C. Smith, yeah, like Clu. Yes, like see, like what it stands for, but if that helps. But I really appreciate all the messages we've been getting. People have been pointing out stuff. Y'all are along for the ride, like we are. This has been a real fun thing, and 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 again, this is the first time we've you, Jeff or I have done a podcast like this where it's a minute by minute breakdown. I didn't know if it would have legs. You know, I mean, let's like, can yeah. you really get through ninety seven episodes? And we're not there yet, but the we're about third in almost. That's yeah, Mister Body is dead and i think that's kind where, of. i think that's where we start mr body is and dead. that's the episode everybody so we hope you enjoy no i'm just kidding yes we'll be back next yeah, week we talk about yeah minute 20 no, which one did this is 29 29 so minute 29. 29 okay so yeah the lights went out and there was a gunshot in the last one and then Everyone is gathered around. There was a shot of Wadsworth in the last one where we saw that Wadsworth was not the one to be shot. And then everybody gathered around the body, almost everybody, because those of you who are watching along with Clue while you're watching the minute, you'll notice that Wadsworth for the rest of this scene is gone. Gone. 
He has disappeared. The whole group is there, but Wadsworth has slipped out of the room. Very interesting um, is that. And that's that one of the things that I remember on subsequent rewatches of the movie, trying to figure out, okay, who's in the room at what time. You really need a yeah. beat sheet. Like they give you the little things when you play the game, the little clue cards. Where yeah. you, have to, you need one of those for the movie. Like, okay, in this scene, they're not there. Um, yeah. But Mr. Body's dead. Here's my question, Jeff Smith. Because the reason why we know he's dead, so it's like the ba boom ba, ah! and then yeah, the, oh yeah, we talked about that with John. All the sounds of the gasps, or you were like, you did an excellent recreation of it last week. I, I you know, don't give me too much credit. As I recall, um, no, it was good. But here's my thing, and because I don't know the answer to this, but the first thing we see in this minute is Christopher Lloyd's Professor Plum standing over yes. Mister Body, trying to confirm either his. Uh, death or if he's still alive and he touches him trying to feel the pulse and says he's dead okay this is a legitimate question because i don't know the answer to it and i know that you're not a medical doctor or don't have any experience around crime and i'm not a forensic expert yeah but like how long does it take for the heart to stop beating you would think after one gunshot you still got some time before it stops totally all right, so it made a mistake. Yeah, I would think after a shot, uh, you'd still have a little bit, like, you know, you see twitching sometimes. But he wasn't shot. But we don't know at this point what. I mean, Mr. Green, I love his delivery. How did he die? Uh, it could have, it's, nobody knows because there's no stab. There's no, there's no way it would have been the rope. There's, I mean, there's nothing that would show it was the, any of the blunt instruments. So they really kind of give up on him pretty quick. Just, oh, he's dead. But there's no obvious way that it happened. Well, he, well in case anyone wants to know, it, however it is, however it happened, this is what yeah. Google says about this. Uh, okay. We found that the human heart activity, which is where, you, and the reason why I'm bringing the heart up is because that's how you indicate the pulse, right? If something yeah, is alive. The pulse. We found that human heart activity often stops and restarts a number of times during a normal dying process. I don't know what normal means, so leave that as a caveat. Out of 480 flatline signals reviewed, we found that a stop and start pattern in 67, which is 14%. So that means that after it flatlined, it still was actually beating a little bit okay. after it died. The longest heart, the longest that the heart has stopped before restarting on its own was four minutes and 20 seconds. So it says that your heart can still beat even after it stopped and you've died. It can still go for a minute. Does that answer our question? No, now I'm more confused. I, no, it's pretty good. But I, I think that... I don't know if anybody actually did anything. I think he just dropped on the floor. It's my theory. I don't think anybody hit him. I don't think anybody sh- shot him. I don't think anybody stabbed him. I think the lights went out and he decided to play dead. Yes. This is this but Wadsworth is... says later that he figured that someone was trying to go after him and not after Wadsworth. That, we talked about this last week. His plan is stupid. <laughs> Gets the, all the people that hate him in the room together and go, uh, I know... This is awkward. You probably want to kill me. But how about the butler you just met? And then we'll all just go about our lives. Yeah, it's like, wait, the wait, idea, got an idea. Yeah. <laughs> and then when the lights went out and he felt somebody like grab it on him, that's when, you know, he realized, oh, plan B, fall down. He's like, uh, he's like a possum. He's like a possum. Yes. He is a possum. He is a possum. is a possum. Which is weirdly spelled yes. with an O in the middle, in the beginning of it. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, it is. So, <laughs> Professor Plum checks him, says that he's dead, and then there's a lot of uh, consternation amongst the guests. Well, how did he die? And he yeah. said, well, it wasn't me, because they were thinking me. it was a gunshot. He says, it's not me. I uh, Someone took the gun from me when the lights went off. Right. And fired yeah. it. There's a bullet hole in the wall. So we've determined not gunshot as of right now, right? They don't really check him out very extensively. It's not a great autopsy. Flip him over. No, he's a very bad 
doctor. <laughs> yes, for many different reasons. Yeah. And, it's just as added to the list. But anybody else probably, I think, would have given him a little look like, well, wait a minute. He could have been shot in the chest, in the leg. And they just kind of look at his face, I guess, and just believe Pro- Professor Plum. And he goes, he's dead. He's really, Christopher Lloyd in this is really throwing out his Doc Brown voice uh, here. It's probably the only time in the movie where he's really great Scott in it. He is great Scott in it in this. That's a great way to put yeah. it. Um because, yeah, he would have filmed Back to the Future before this movie. Um, yeah. So there's some remnant. There's some, some remnant. Doc residue, yeah. Some Doc residue. Um, in Resi-doc. the Doc. Yes. Residue. <laughs> I won't say yes to that. Don't. No, that's bad. It can't all be Cluderverse. He <laughs> yeah, had some Residoc. <laughs> uh, ask your doctor about Residoc. Oh, Oh man, if you had and do, do never take Resodoc and Cluvian at the same time. No. These are medications or, uh, that should not the influence of alcohol or uh while stealing plutonium from Libyans. Yes, do not do any of With those. With your your name in big bold letters on the side of your van well, in the empty parking lot. It was just an initial for the E. It could have been any E That's Brown. Sure. It could have been Ernie Brown. <laughs> it was totally innocent. Ernie Brown, well known in yeah, Hill Ernie Valley. Ernie Brown's a stand-up guy. W- well known. I mean, mayoral candidate. Yeah. He could have. He could have yeah. run for mayor. He could have been the. He guy. was up against Goldie Wilson, but uh, lost in the primary. Yeah. Ernie Brown, man. Election fraud. Yeah. Well, there was the scandal. There was the scandal. You know. Well, there's always a scandal. Ask Mrs. Peacock about that. Uh, yeah. Mrs. Peacock goes to get a drink. Speaking of drinking, and Mrs. Peacock, maybe she was poisoned. This is something, so basically a lot of the stuff that's happening in this scene was setting up the fourth ending, which never made it to the final cut of Clue. Because Wadsworth, I'm sure we've mentioned before at this point, is the killer in ending four. So that's why he disappears in this scene. He's going off to do his dirty work. And the brandy is in fact poisoned at the end of uh, ending four. Because they all drink it and they all get poisoned, and that's how that, that's his big plan and how they're going to die. So without a dude four, there's just a lot of kind of loose ends in this scene. Yeah, because she she's freaked out. She being Mrs. Peacock's freaked out about Mr. Body being dead, and then so she gets some to drink, and that is the most Doc Brownish that we hear. Professor Plum is when he goes, yeah. "Maybe she was poisoned," and he does the big <laughs> theatrical yeah. point. The big conductor arms. The conductor arms. Uh, Marty! <laughs> get the cognac! Get the cognac! Marty! Um, and and, and what, what, what was great was Eileen Brennan's, you know, scream here. Um, yeah. <laughs> when she thinks it's, it's poisoned. Very yeah. funny. And she can't get control of herself. And that is when um, Mr. Green tries to go ahead and, and get control of her. I will say, yeah. you know what was interesting here is after she drops the glass, boom, it's a one shot of her. And then there's some really interesting camera work that, that is here for um, Christopher Lloyd. Actually, right before that, there's this pan oh, there's zoom. zoom. Yeah. What Do you know what that's about? Because it seems very random. There's not a lot of that in the movie. It's it's Yeah, I don't think there is another Zoom. Like no. that in the movie. There's definitely scenes where the camera moves and follows them around, but it is weird while he's kind of going through his uh, jacket. Is he going through his coat. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of m- mustard with his coat. What for? I do not know. Like, I think what, he's what about he to, for? he's pulling out, I think, a little cigarette pouch or something. He's got a little uh, red well, he's pouch. Got the pipe. Yeah. It's probably his tobacco then. He, his it's tobacco. time for a smoke and then. He spots the drink. Yeah, there is there is kind of an odd little zoom. I don't know. It is odd. It's just it just really stands out when you're watching it. Like, what is that for? Yeah. Like, are we trying to? I didn't know if maybe because you've edited a film uh, yeah. now a couple of times, and and I know this just from some rudimentary video editing that I've done. Um, Sometimes when the shot's great, but something is screwed up in the background. I well, I guess that's not a that but I guess that's not a post zoom. I'm sure back in eighty five they did that in camera. 
No, I'm sure that was live. I, it, just, it almost feels like they were just kind of resetting the shot and they kept the move in. Like yeah. it was like they intended it to be, you know, a medium shot and then they moved closer and there should have been a cut. And then when it cuts back, it's already on him closer. But somebody liked it. They kept it. And that happens too, right? Where you just see, see a happy accident. And you're like, oh, ah, I like That's that. That's true. It's cool. Yeah. Whatever. You fall in love with the mistake sometimes. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and I bet you when they did that, when the, when the director of photography and Jonathan Lynn, when they noticed this and the editor, they're like, I bet decades from now, Years two later. guys are going to be sitting on a podcast yeah. talking about yeah. this movie and they're going to say, what's the deal what's with the Zoom? Podcast? What's yeah. going First on? Saying, what's a podcast? And they go, well, just that's not the point. The point is. These two guys. <laughs> and I use that term loosely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Better be talking about the Zoom because they have to talk about something every <laughs> 60 seconds of Clue. So why not? But it does stand but it's out. True. It does feel it does it does feel off. And uh yeah, I guess I've I've always kind of felt it without really realizing that it was just kind of oh, that's the, the weird little shot. I'm very excited for the next minute because it's going to start with a slap because we cut off right before Mr. Green uh, has, has to do what he has to do to silence Mrs. Peacock screaming. So it's it's going to we're going to start with a bang on the on the next episode. I think that we get there now. Uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot to discuss here other than Mr. Body's you know, dead. And she's now we have a suspected brandy poisoning. Um, yeah. which would have been a very immediate poison, right? I would think so. And I love, I got to point out uh, Madeline Codd throwing her hat across the floor too, which is great too. When she says, well, one of us, one of us must have killed him. And it's the first Mr. Green. I didn't do it, oh, it's the first. which she will say oh. several times in the movie, but that this is the first one. They all drop their weapons in this one. It all, the, the whole thing of them having their own personal weapons is gone now because once the lights come on, Mrs. Peacock drops the knife. Uh, the gun is on the floor. Pipe gets dropped. I think Miss Scarlet's the only one that keeps holding on to the candlestick for a while. Yeah. It's pretty fun, man. It's fun. Yeah. This is fun. This is, a fun. this is a fun thing that we're seeing. You're tired. I'm not tired. Okay, good. Okay, no, no, good. this is a fun thing. I, 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 I like, because, it again... Not having a whole lot of background in film production or even theatrical production, limited, but not a lot. This movie is such a play in the sense of, like, I, I can understand when you're writing the story out, and this may be from my, like, wrestling background, is you get to a point, what we call spot in the match, um, and you got to try to reset things sometimes. You're like, okay, how are we going to reset this? Like, what, what are we going to do to reset the match? And this, to me, reads like the resetting of the match, right? It's like, hey, we need yeah. to kind of start from zero. Everyone drop your weapons. Because, we, you know, yeah. there's a conversation. We need something for they drop the weapons so that we can reset and then cause more the confusion. Right. It's a, a little uh, breath of calmness, kind of. I mean, they're screaming and everything. But this, in a movie that goes a million miles per hour, this is a rare moment where everybody stops and goes, okay, what's happening? Right, and we don't really find out, and we don't find out yet. But it, but it, this movie is a really good way of breaking down almost that save the cat format that we've talked about before. And here's the other great thing, for those inspiring screenwriters out there, I guess, save the cat, great book, great recommendation from Jeff Smith. What I learned more than anything about from Save the Cat is again to go back to wrestling. The way that you write a screenplay is very much the way that you lay out a wrestling story in a match. So I'm breaking a little bit of uh, what they call kayfabe in wrestling. Um, but you've never heard of that term, have you? No. Well, never heard of kayfabe? Yeah, K no. uh, K A Y F A B E. So this, I'm breaking kayfabe, which is the, the theater version of breaking the fourth wall. This is, oh. this is um, kind of how a wrestling match is set up. So you have the good guy who's a baby face and you have right. the bad guy who's the heel. Okay. These are the, the terms heel. that we I've use. heard these terms. Yes. Okay. So the way a wrestling match goes, normally it's always the same thing, same uh, setup. 
And now that you know this, next time you ever watch wrestling, look for this. It starts with what's called a baby face shine. This is when the good guy gets in some good stuff. He starts hitting the bad guy. He's getting the advantage here. Baby face shine. Crowd's going crazy. Yes, crowd's going nuts. And then there's a cutoff, which is when the the heel stops the baby face shine, right? So there's the cutoff, and then you go into the next phase of the story, which is called heel heat. This is when the bad guy starts putting some some kind of dastardly moves and a lot of offense on the good guy, breaking him down, crumbling his Turns spirit. the table. Yes. Oh, no. Crumbling his spirit and the spirit of the audience watching, rooting for the good guy, rooting for the yeah. baby face. Yeah. This is heel heat. And then you have what's called a hope spot, where it looks like the good guy's going to come back. The baby face hope spot. Yeah. He starts a little bit uh, of a comeback, comeback, and then boom, cut him back off. Right back to heel heat. Would this be like when a steel chair comes into play, like cheating, or that's coming up? Not yet. I mean, you. So a okay. heel is always kind of cheating, right? Right. He was always but looking. Then, usually, for, it's towards the end. I feel, from my memory, where when the manager messes with them or like distracts them. And the at times, looks away. yes. At yeah. times, it comes normally to to the end. But yeah, so you go back into heel heat. Okay. And so this is when, yes, you can, after the hope spot, this is when you can have the manager distraction. You could have the rake of the back, the thumb to the eye, the low <laughs> blow behind the referee's back, uh, yeah. however you want to do it, the, the grabbing of the tights, you know, or whatever you want to do to, to get your cheat in. But this is continuing heel heat. And then you have the baby face comeback where he now overcomes all adversity. He's fired up. The Hulkamania, he, yeah. yeah. The yeah, the Hulk, the you know, and he starts hitting him with yeah, the punches, yeah, yeah. right? This is the this is the babyface comeback, okay? And now from here, you can either go into the babyface finish, which is where yeah. you're going to go for the big boot and the leg drop for all you Hulk Hogan fans. Yeah, yeah. And you win the match one, Hulk two, Hogan, three. I, I just picture all this. Like, he must have really liked structure in his match because it seems like a lot of his matches were that way because you were basically just waiting for that moment where all of a sudden he just had enough and he got that extra bit of out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the babyface comeback. So you can either go into the finish, which is called the go home, into the finish. Okay. Go home is like what sets up for the end of the match, uh, which is called the finish. Or okay. the heel can find a way in during the go home to cheat again to win, and then the finish is for the heel. But they all follow that structure. Every wrestling match, whether it's the first match on the card or the last match on the card, follows that yeah. general principle, those those kind of beats. And um, right now, I feel like we're in the heel heat in this, mat, in this movie. Okay. Because now the dastardly deed has been done to Mr. Body, who's not necessarily a babyface, but no one in this movie really is. Right? No. But he's had the offense put on him. Now we're in the heat. We're in the thick of it. This is this is the thralls of the match. We're gonna see if we can get the come uppins, as they say in wrestling, for the heel right. and, and figure out who did it. So anyway, Jeff Smith. We got we got a slap to start us off, uh, which is a great yep. hope spot. Which is an excellent uh, wrestling thing as well. It is a big wrestling thing. Jeff C. Smith on yeah. Twitter, cluedoc.com. Get the documentary on Amazon. All social media at Brad Gilmore. This has been Minute 29, a very interesting conversation for Minute 29 of Clue the Movie Podcast. And we'll be back next week with Minute 30, another minute mark. And we'll see you the there. Big 30. Big 30. Hurry up, tape running out.